morning, everybody. Um, my name is Carolyn Blunden. I'm the HR and Organizational Effectiveness Director for Quest. Um, and very proud uh, to present to you our findings of an employee value proposition for non-permanent employees. I'm not going to spend too much time in terms of the contents, but in a nutshell, what we really want to do is share the study objectives with you. We had three phases of the studies, which I will talk you through. And then what were some of the findings in terms of the design of an employee value proposition for employees who are not in permanent employment? So if we look, uh, what is an EVP, the definition? Our objective was really to look at how do we enable, as Quest, employees to grow with us. So what can we, as Quest, in terms of a temporary employment provider, what can we offer our employees in exchange for their engagement, capabilities, and experience? So our objectives were really, firstly, to understand what were the current perceptions of the Quest EVP, from both our candidates, so these are employees, potential employees who are applying for roles, as well as our assignees, employees who are deployed um, at our various clients. We then wanted to understand, importantly, in terms of the design of the EVP, what are the triggers that would make an employee work harder, so be more productive, and what are the triggers that would make them stay? I just want to touch briefly in terms of the relevance of the EVP in a temporary employment or non-permanent space. The industry, and uh, you would know from a whole host of research that has been published, plays a big role, especially considering the unemployment numbers, uh, I think this morning they were uh, sitting at 36%, plays a big role in bridging school leavers to the world of work. So the focus is on technical skills, so technical ability, whether that's in a call center or the bank. But the area where we wanted to really play in and where we find that a lot of assignees have constraints is around this world of work, the rules, the governance, the, rules, the, governance, the need the to manage, manage compliance requirements and their own self-esteem. We also needed to look at retention. So how do we keep employees with Quest? Um, why generally do they stay with us uh, for less than one year in terms of the majority of staff? How do we increase our company brand identification? So Quest has a large blue collar clients and what we were finding, um, and we'll show you this in terms of the research, is that we lose the brand awareness and brand identity affinity with Quest as the assignees, the non-permanent employees, start to identify with the client as the, as the primary employer. Also, what are the productivity drivers, which is linked to the next point around intangibles? We would always assume, and based on high-level feedback, that the high-level drivers or the productivity drivers were around money. But what about the value of the intangibles? Is recognition, is development, is time off for study important in the life of an assignee? And then understanding onboarding. So historically, we have spent a huge amount of time, effort, and resources in terms of the technical training. But the ability in terms of developing the employee around issues that lie below the iceberg. So what are those personal and interpersonal skills that they need to develop and enhance in order to be effective in the world of work? I want to also share with you that about 30%, which is a conservative number, of our non-permanent staff actually transition to permanent roles within the client. So it's very clear the important role that the temporary employment provider plays in terms of this onboarding uh, and development journey. Um, and then employee development and support. How do we enable them with an end-to-end -end solution? So we really had to look at what is important so that we don't just 
pick and choose certain technical, whether it's call center training or NQF aligned training, but how, how are, or is it important rather, that we look at an end-to-end -end value chain around transferring knowledge that is relevant to the business world? So let me talk about phases one and two of the project. Again, just to reflect back, we were looking at what makes assignees work harder, employees work harder, and why do they stay at Quest? There were five components that were measured, and I'll just give you examples of what the um, criteria are in terms of those components. So with reward, we're looking at pay, medical aid, leave, time off for study, etc. For opportunity, we're looking at skills, advancement, prospects, development. The company, here we focus on Quest, and obviously the perceptions around, is it a good company to work for? Do they perceive it to be uh, stable and a career enabler? Around work, we were looking at recognition, whether they feel valued, perceptions around work-life balance, and whether we provide the appropriate support to enable their full potential. And people, our employees interact with a line manager, with the client, and then importantly, with an account manager who is provided by Quest. And this account manager, for all intents and purposes, works as a mini HR manager. They facilitate coaching, performance management, discipline frameworks, orientation, remuneration. And we needed to understand the effectiveness of the role of the account manager. How did we complete the study? Given the size, we looked at a quantitative base paper review um, and we had a 30% completion rate, which we felt was uh, we were comfortable and that it had credibility. And there were in excess of 3,000 respondents who participated. As I mentioned earlier, we were measuring the perceptions of our candidates, so those applicants for employment, as compared with employees who are already based at a client to identify if there are any gaps or value leakage in that value, uh, the recruitment value chain. In phase three, we also looked at the same components, again, measuring productivity and retention. And here we went into a qualitative study. So we looked at two clients to see if we could validate the broader quantitative results. Quest engaged the consumer psychology lab on the constructs, the findings, and the fieldwork to ensure program credibility and objectivity. Now, before I get more into the results, let's look at who, what is the makeup of our employees? <coughs> Excuse me. So we see that our employees are predominantly black, our employees are predominantly female, and their age profile is between 20 to 29. So a key vulnerable group in terms of our society and enabling our future. In terms of their years of service, they tend to have one or less years of service. And that correlates with the years of service that they have with the client. So what would typically happen, and this bears out in the next slide, is that they have not rotated. They've tended to stay with one client during their employment tenure at Quest. So if these are the demographics, and this was the project objective, what did we actually find? So the difference in the perceptions of candidates, so those people applying for roles, versus our own employees who are regarded or termed assignees. So for a candidate, they don't have an institutional view their most important driver in terms of opportunity for both why they work hard and why they would stay revolves around securing a permanent job, which is typical with what you would find in international research. We also see, and given that most of our um, candidates have limited work experience, that they're reliant on information and induction in order to leverage um, their transition into the world of work. For our employees, we see that they are more disillusioned in terms of the conversion to permanent employment. And we also found that in the qualitative case study. 
but it doesn't correlate with the actual findings where at least 30%, as I mentioned earlier, do translate to permanent positions. They are their issues in terms of productivity or their, um, uh, yeah, sorry, their, their considerations in terms of productivity relate more to on-the-job training, so how do I develop and further myself, as well as how do I get the required information and induction to ensure my success. If we look, move on to the organization, and this is the company, and we focus a lot on brand awareness. As I mentioned earlier, Quest employees, Quest managers, but they are under the direct control and supervision of the company. And we do find that we lose brand loyalty because the association is with that company. So this is very clear in terms of these sides, that the brand awareness, uh, the positive, the attractiveness as an employer between what the candidate's perceptions are versus the employee is obviously um, uh, decreased because of the engagement with the client. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just that for us to be aware of it and how do we manage it and work with the client in terms of providing aligned support and cohesion. Very interestingly for us, and this will be borne out later, is that most of the recruitment or how do they hear about positions actually comes still through word of mouth. In terms of things um, that would make our candidates work harder and stay longer is the fact that Quest has been in the business for 40 years. We are a division of AdCorp, they see us as stable um, and a good company to work for. Very clearly in terms of our employees, stability, our size um, was a key issue in terms of retention and productivity. If we look at work, our candidates regarded the ability for Quest to deliver opportunities as a key indicator for why they would work harder. Recognition is something that was important for them in terms of why they would stay. Interestingly enough, if we look at the employees, support, flexibility um, are key to them. And we will see in the study that flexibility is actually a double-edged sword. So flexible in that I have control over my, over my working life, I am able to earn money. But in the, in, on, on the other side of the coin, um, through the flexibility, um, I'm not always able to plan either my finances or my work-life balance and other time available. So let's look at people. And for people, we specifically looked at the role of the account manager, so the HR manager who provides support to these staff on a full-time basis. Obviously, the candidates were not aware of the account manager. But what is very clear in terms of the findings is that the knowledge and the support and the approachability of our account managers is critical in terms of ensuring that these vulnerable workers with little work experience have a place of safety um, and alignment uh, through the account manager. I'm going to move on to project three. So those were our findings qualitatively in terms of the EVP. Bearing in mind that we were looking at what is important before we start developing. So in terms of confirming the results that we found, we needed to really break down and look at the world of the non-permanent employee and use those findings specifically in terms of how they would impact recruitment and retention for Quest in terms of our positioning as an employer of choice. We chose two sites specifically. One site where we were the sole provider in terms of non-permanent employees, and a second site where we were one of a few. In terms of the demographics, who are the people that we are working with, they tended to be between 25 and 35 years, so they were slightly older than what our core study had shown in terms of the 20 to 29. Their previous work experience was limited, but they did have a little work experience as they were prim primarily now in a cell space. They all had a minimum of grade 12. Some of them did have postgraduate qualifications. 
And we can see as well their length of service because of the sales environment, which has its own complexity, is slightly longer than what we experienced in the main study. The topics that we engage them on is what excites non-permanent employees about their current roles? What is the view of the role and benefits in terms of being a, a member of a non-permanent workforce? And who, in their opinion, did they feel were best suited for temporary work? Um, their views were critical in terms of us being able to hinge our EVP on what were those aspects for this target group and our broader target group in terms of reward, opportunity, work, organization and people. So let's look at what excited them about their jobs. Where commission was being earned, the focus was money. So this was to, tended to be in a sales space um, and they liked control over how much money they could earn. So in terms of the overtime, the flexibility, doing unpopular and sociable shifts um, meant a big deal in terms of their being able to afford their lifestyles. A lot mentioned client engagement and personal development, so the ability to engage, solve a problem, the technical skills that they, in, uh, uh, they developed. Um, again, very much a people focus, the issue of recognition, learning new skills on the job, whether that was customer service or technical skills, and a key area of excitement for this group was the variation in daily activities. So the multi-skilling, no jobs, were, no two days were exactly the same. Let's look at a balanced view in terms of the pros and cons of permanent or non-permanent employment. What did this group express as the benefits? They do see non-permanent employment as a journey to permanency. They do acknowledge that they don't have the skills or uh, the experience or uh, capabilities in terms of bridging generally from school leavers to the world of work and Quest plays a critical role around managing that transition. Flexible hours was very key and again like I said a bit of a double-edged sword in terms of the fact that their shifts are not always known and they may need to fill in based on changes around client demand. They have a sense of control over their own lives. So a key theme that came through is the dignity that we have provided in terms of facilitating what are generally first-time uh, first uh, job seekers. They enjoyed the overtime work and the fact that Quest is associated with big brands, that they could actually move around. They did have the opportunity to say, you know, I'd rather look at uh, business process outsourcing or call center or banking or retail. They, they felt that they had choice. What are the negatives? And when I say securing finance, securing finance with uh, banks, lending institutions, because they are non-permanent, they are prejudiced in that respect. No benefits like medical aid. They in fact do have benefits like medical aid, but again, it would come down to affordability. And also the a gap in Quest's orientation and induction of these employees around the different options that would be more affordable um, for the assignees. And again, I have mentioned it, that the shifts are not always known, so that makes planning difficult. We asked them who they think are best suited for part-time employees, and they generally will take this back to themselves, so they use themselves as a comparison. The best uh, suited are 18 to 30 years, and this is again, I keep saying, very critical in terms of the government uh, plans around unemployment and the development of the youth young, recently matriculated, little work experience. Uh, they see this as a stepping stone in their career, and it's generally for people they believe who are single with no work responsibilities because of the hours that are required. When we ask them about the personal attributes that make somebody suited, they regard it as patience, having the right mindset, and knowing what you want. Um, who, in general, should be suited to non-permanent uh, employment? People not wanting to uh, work too long, you can give short notice, so you can change your mind if something else comes up or there's other opportunities, you want to travel, you don't want to be here for too long. And so we start to get a view in terms of the perceptions of who are this target group and their senses around what is important to them. Given that recruitment 
and onboarding and retention were primary focus areas. We additionally engaged them around recruitment and the findings were interesting. When looking for positions, the majority relied on the inter internet to, uh, to search for vacancies. They didn't search for jobs, they would just load in a certain role or opportunities or vacancies and are, were unable to discriminate between a recruitment agency or consultancy, for example, or a job search engine. So they just browsed as many sites as possible and it felt to them that their CVs were just going into a, into a pit, okay? They did use a social media, but were non-specific. Um, but yes, primarily the internet, but I must say the perception is that the success rate for them on the internet is zero. A lot of them use newspapers, given the uh, community that we are talking about, the description that we've given, they rely on the free community newspapers, and then what we've seen specifically in our context is referrals. So they know somebody who has or does work at Quest. <clears throat> so in terms of our role, what did they see as our role? What was the benefit of using Quest as a temporary employment uh, provider? Um, our recruitment and our recruitment processes came out as tops. Um, they get better access to work in good companies. So because of the credibility and the relationships that Quest have, as mentioned earlier, that there's choice in terms of where I want to apply my skills and if I want to change or have some variation. And then the fact that Quest runs multiple assessments, whether these are literary, uh, um, uh, uh, financial, literary, language, um, these assessments were able to assist the assignees in terms of identifying opportunity areas. Our key win as well is that we do face-to-face, -face, they, they actually met somebody when they applied at Quest. So they didn't feel that the applications went into a big hole, they were actually contacted and they had an interview with a recruitment consultant. So there was a faster response and they knew what was happening. They do talk about protection and the protection is by the account manager in terms of the support, the relationship, the facilitation of skills, the respecting the individual and providing recognition for a job well done. And very importantly, they see the temporary employment service provider or rather Quest as a stepping stone to permanent employment. So permanent employment um, is seen as the end goal. So for us, what did we learn about our onboarding? We need to optimize our brand positioning. And so that includes the things that are important around medical aid, learning and development, different offerings, different solutions. So that is critical for us in terms of going forward. How do we speed up the time from selection to placement so that people can prepare and plan better? I spoke earlier about unpacking the benefits. And the emphasis of the role in the non, of the non-permanent employee in the broader context. They tend to regard permanent employment as a status that those people are defined to be better than them. And so how do we, how do we ensure in terms of non-permanent employees providing a very important role in, in an organization, whether that is in terms of project work, whether that is in terms of increased workload or students or people compl completing learnerships or internships, how do we make sure in terms of self-esteem and value contribution that they believe that they are making a sustainable and valued contribution? And that talks to the training, the empowered and the sense of ownership. The role of the account manager for us is critical. Um, and then the communication mediums. Important to hear from them. They don't like to read. They like audio, they like visual. So very different in terms of how we communicate uh, with this group. So let's look at the findings. We've given you a perspective in terms of this select group for the qualitative study, but what did we actually find? And what we did was we compared our findings to the overall group findings for the two qualitative uh, groups. So if we look at reward, medical aid is seen as important, but very clearly, if you look at medical aid benefits in the third graph at the bottom, Medical aid is not going to make me stay longer. 
Noise is going to make me work harder. Okay, more pay are the two drivers in terms of those uh, the reward productivity and retention benchmark. Very clearly to us, so the participants indicated that recognition is critical for them in terms of uh, the world of work. If we look at opportunity, and here with opportunity, we're talking about training, development, etc. Surprisingly, only if you look at how many would work harder um, because Quest would uh, secure them a permanent position, an average of 10% said that they would work harder. So even though we know for this group the aspiration is to get a permanent job, um, the, it, it would not affect product uh, uh, working harder in terms of the EVP. Access to training is important. And at the top as well, we see this, the detail that I've uh, uh, spoken about already around the information for induction so that I know what is expected and my role so that I can adapt to the client context more easily. Okay. If we look at brand perception, we've spoken about it and the pilot sites reconfirmed what we found in the main study. Um, so what we see is friends worth of, word of mouth. Again, we're not saying that the brand perception that we drop brand perception from our candidates. It's because of that relationship and around uh, working together with the clients. But it's important for us um, in terms of understanding how we can use that brand awareness around other skills development and also to improve our recruitment process with scarce skills. Productivity and retention. Again, we very much find that the stability is critical a big enough company, got a reputation, is respected by its clients. But again, a key feature here is the account manager in terms of the fact that it's important that these assignees are employees so that they are being looked after. Okay. If we look at work commitment, so issues around work productivity and Attention, again, recognition, and listening to me when I have a problem. So very importantly, they've expressed the requirement to improve their skills, being recognized, and the ability to work flexibly. Again, we are looking at the realities for the assignees. It's very clear that the strong presence of an account manager on site, who knows who I am and makes me feel that I, that I matter, is a critical component in terms of what are the realities. We can see that for the one site, it was far more, uh, the scores were a lot higher than for client number two. And when I go to the second site to see if it would be important to you, they're saying these are their realities. But you can see the difference in terms of, I may not have this currently, but this is absolutely important to me. So as Quest, we need to spend a lot of our time with the account managers in terms of ensuring the appropriate skills, people skills, people management skills, um, ability to engage clients, um, ability to look at uh, individuals from a personal development and uh, succession planning. So I've really um, gone through it quite quickly in terms of the findings, obviously high level, if these are the things that we found. So based on the quantitative and the qualitative study and the difference in perceptions between candidates and assignees, what are we saying? So in summary, what are their behaviors? Although we see more pay is critical in terms of determining behavior, productivity, and staying longer, they do claim that all their efforts were to secure a permanent uh, position. Okay. So we need to improve or talk about, we have got a conversion ratio of 30%, so we need to be able to talk to our clients and to our signees more formally in terms of what is that development or career path that can ensure the conversion to permanent. So things that we are looking at is internships, 
learnerships. We also are looking at ensuring that our interventions in terms of development are not solely theoretical. We cannot just do theoretical in terms of the, this group of employees who still need to develop or have a long way to go in terms of interpersonal um, and um, interpersonal and uh, self-esteem skills. So what we are looking at is how do we transfer knowledge to the workplace that is relevant to the workplace. And that would include things like coaching a buddy system and actually measuring outputs that are not just about the number of calls taken, but outputs in terms of quality indicators. I think that the next point I have discussed in detail, the adjustment to client context cannot be underestimated. We take them through a development phase of two weeks. They go through technical training. They love it. They feel confident. They then come into a space where they don't know anybody. They haven't worked before. Um, and they are faced with all these demands and pressures in terms of productivity. So how do we ensure that we facilitate so that our employees are resilient um, and adaptable? Um, I spoke about the initial training, the empowerment, big need for uh, recognition, which is absolutely un un understandable and important in terms of these employees in the early career stage. And the role of the account manager in terms of creating brand loyalty, alignment, and a sense of belonging. So what are then these things that make them tick? What do we know? They're young. They're at the beginning of their, of their career. They have limited opportunities. They are desperate for opportunities in terms of being part of the workplace. And there is an impact of generational theory as well, where you know, being a temp for three months is, is, is not good enough. They would like to move, and so they put pressure on themselves, but there's a, a gap in terms of the skills and exposure. They love the big brands that they're working for. They struggle to adjust. Um, they love the fact that non-permanent uh, employment takes them out of their situation or out of their home context or environmental context and gives them opportunity and gives them control. And the primary social networking um, is mobile and not uh, online. So those were our key indicators. So for Quest, how do we facilitate their career journeys? And I'm just going to give you a high level in terms of what are we looking at. Quest enables opportunities. And these are the, the things that we are working with. Also inhibits future opportunities. So obviously, Quest as their employer feels could try harder in terms of securing permanent positions. So there's that perception that we need to work with in terms of the EVP around work and opportunity. Flexible hours, OK? So yes, we provide flexible hours. But the, the uh, constraint sits around planning and scheduling. Yes, these candidates and assignees can improve their income, but they have no control in terms of determining uh, what hours, what shifts. They're reliant, obviously, on the circumstances within the client and operational requirements. So given this very macro context, what are the things that for Quest we have found that we need to target for our employee value proposition? So, and again, remembering that we are driving retention and productivity. So our key findings are the status of being associated with big brands and the opportunities that those present, the earning potential in terms of non-permanent and the flexibility that is required, um, and opportunities in terms of being in control around that earnings potential. Sense of achievement, the skills, the capabilities, the experience. How do we provide a bundled solution that is attractive and relevant to the workplace and not just theoretical? Empowerment, how do we ensure that these vulnerable employees are empowered and comfortable to hold their own within the workplace and feel part of making a, a worthwhile contribution? Recognition, critical. So not only um, the, you know, the perception that if my targets are not met or um, um, I'm not meeting the criteria in terms of uh, times, et cetera, but how, how am I recognized when it's a job well done? Flexibility, to enhance the concept of flexibility and control, 
And then very importantly for us as a non-permanent uh, employment provider and recruiter, how do we work with clients around ensuring that these um, employees feel that all the steps are making a contribution in terms of them developing as an individual and realizing their full potential. I know I've spoken very quickly. Thank you very much for your time. I don't know if there are any um, questions. Nothing. So thank you very much. There have been no questions. Uh, the presentation is being recorded, which we will uh, forward to you shortly. Thank you very much for your time and the opportunity to engage with you.